Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to talk you through my daily warm up. And so I used to roll out for 45 minutes and still never be able to get my splits down. So now I have this 30 minute active warm up that I use to get me moving on all cylinders. And we don't just need range of motion, we need strength in that range of motion. So this is what I do every day before I'm ready to attack that day in the gym. I want to start by saying I don't bother with stretching before this. This will get me ready to stretch. And so I'll start with 20 jumping jacks, making sure I'm getting the backs of my shoulders as open as possible, as well as my ankles. There's also a big focus on me keeping my hands in the plane behind my body. Now I move on to split jacks. Great one for the chest to open up, as well as the ankles and the backs of the shoulder. It's also important to focus on your breathing throughout this entire exercise. You wanna be in your nose as much as possible. The next exercise will be squats, really focusing on getting your butt as far back as possible, trying to get as much bend in your ankles as possible, and keeping that posture as straight up and down as you can. Another good thing to think about is getting your knees over your pinky toes. This next exercise is going to be a single leg RDL extension. What you want to focus on is keeping that post leg slightly bent and then driving your hips back as far as you can, trying to get that heel into the wall while keeping your toe pointing directly towards the ground. Then with my shoulders, I try reaching as far out as I can and turning my wrists and my elbows as much as I can like I would for a handstand on rings. This next exercise is a prisoner squat. It's about going slow on the way down and trying to drive that front knee as far over your toes as possible while keeping your posture as straight as you can and making sure that you're squeezing that glute med in the back. Now we're gonna get that heart rate back up with some split jacks. Be sure to keep breathing through your nose and try to get a little more reach in the back than you did on your previous set. Now we're off to side lunges. It's super important to keep that posture, keep that knee going over your pinky toe while simultaneously pushing your butt as far back as possible. This is a great adductor stretch to get you ready for your splits. And if you have any flares in any of your routines, it's going to be super helpful to have these fired up before you can actually get into doing them. Now on to the next part, we're going to go into downward dog and seal stretch. I feel like I always get some cracks in my upper back when I do this. And this is just a great way to get your abs opened up as well before you get into those really bendy back handsprings that always seem to hurt. And if you know anything about me, you gotta have a great Achilles stretch. You don't wanna have that thing rupture on you anytime soon. Take my word for it. The last thing to mention is when you push back into your heels, try getting your shoulders as close to your kneecaps as possible. Now we're gonna go right into our push-ups. We're gonna be slow on the way down and then explode on the way up. It's a great way to get that eccentric muscle fiber movement and not to mention a great tricep and lat warm up as well. And now we're gonna go right into my yoga stretches. This is where you put your foot out in front by your hand. You're gonna drop your elbow to your heel and then you're gonna reach as far back as you can trying to touch the opposite wall. And then you're gonna thread the needle, push it through so that you can get as far back as you can. And it's gonna be a great warm up for your back. And then you're gonna repeat it on the opposite side. And I like to do this twice on each side as well. Now we're gonna go to our backs and we're gonna start our stomach circuit. This first exercise is gonna be 10 side crunches on each side. Next is gonna be cross toe touches and it's gonna be 10 on each side or a total of 20. Then we're gonna get into side V-ups, trying to get that elbow close to that knee, which I don't think I do very well, so don't judge me. But we're gonna do 20 on each side. Then we're gonna get into 20 V-ups and this is probably gonna be the hardest part of this entire ab circuit. But after this, you should have a good sweat and then we're gonna plateau with the rest of the exercises to just maintain that light sweat 
and just to keep that body warm for a little bit longer and that heart rate up. And now we're gonna get into our arch rocks. This is a great one for your vault positions, getting that heel drive off through the board and off the table as well. What I try to do with my arms is swing my pinkies to be as high as I can, like I'm gonna do a giant on rings and land in that handstand position. Now after that, we're gonna turn over and we're gonna get into our U's. And so on this, you can have a little bit of an arch in your back and you wanna really focus in on those hip flexors, being able to move from side to side and really extend that range of motion. And now we're gonna get into our butterfly kicks, get that lower back back down on the ground and kick your legs with your foot is crossing over the top of the other foot. You're gonna do that 20 times and now you're gonna get into your swimmer kicks and you're gonna do 10 on each side for a total of 20 while trying to hold a Maltese position in your chest. That's the biggest goal for that and why my arms are down at my side like that. And now we're gonna get into our heel touches. Try to get those toes flexed and pointing to the sky. Have that lower back touching and try to touch each heel with your hands at least 10 times on each side. Next, we're gonna roll over to our stomach and we're gonna do arch ups. And while we're doing this, we're trying to reach our hands out as far as possible so that we can turn our pinkies out and try to mimic that handstand on rings. We're gonna go right into a swimmer kick and this is gonna individually try to get a little more extension on each side of your back. And now you're gonna hold for 10 seconds and really trying to reach as long as you possibly can. Then we're gonna flip over and we're gonna do butt ups. And so you're gonna just get your heels to barely touch the ground and then you're gonna bring them up to a 90 degree and then you're gonna push your butt and really focus on that upper portion of your abs. And you're gonna do 15 of these. Next, you're gonna put your knees in a 90 degree angle, flex those toes up to the ceiling and you're gonna arch to a point where you get a little bit of a bridge in your back, and then you're gonna do crunches for 30 reps. Next is gonna be a hollow hold, trying to be as flat and low to the ground as you can. In this position, I am pretending to be doing a Maltese with my head up, my feet as low and flat as possible so I don't have any angles, and really just trying to get that muscle memory for when I have to get into that position later. Next, we're gonna do diagonal reaches. This is a great exercise for range of motion and will help warm you up for any twisting skills you might have to do today. Next, we're gonna put those hip flexors to work with some Russian twists. And you're gonna do a total of 100, so that's 50 on each side. And this is just a good one to really warm you up before you get into that crazy twisting life. And that'll do it for the ab circuit and your active warm up. Now it's time to use what we've got. We're nice and warm, we're loose, we're sweating just a little bit. Now it's time to get those ranges of motion like we weren't able to do before our active warm up. I had just finished up a little shoulder stretch there. Now I'm being my own chiropractor and cracking all the little bones in my neck and my upper back. And then I'm gonna transition to some shoulder stretches, making sure that my posterior delt is all good. I usually get one or two pops on each side. And then we'll move on to some more lower back stretches, reaching that foot across their side and trying to get our opposite shoulder to touch the ground. And we're gonna move on to some pancake and this is gonna transition us into our splits because this is what we've been waiting for, making sure that we could get these down without having to painfully push ourselves through it while we're cold. Now that we're finally out of the middle split, we're gonna do some lower back stretches. You put your foot by your kneecap and then you pull yourself, trying to get your chin as close to your toe as possible and pushing down that opposite leg is really gonna open up the hips on the side. We'll follow it up with another good hip flexor stretch. It's where you put your leg at 90 degrees and you try getting your chest to face over your heel and keep that good posture and really try to push that knee down as well. And then you're gonna switch sides and repeat the process. Now we're gonna transition to our wrist rehab. 
And I'm also going to use this little ball right here to do some plantar fascia work because I found out after my Achilles tear that having a tight plantar fascia can lead to a lot of ankle pain, calf pain, and Achilles pain. And doing this will help open up that big toe and that's going to be crucial for you being able to have range of motion through all your digging passes and all your landings. On top of that, this is my favorite wrist rehab exercise and I like to do these at the same time, kill two birds with one stone. But the idea is to get that range as far as possible, use your opposing hand to push it down and resist, and then slowly come all the way back up and to the other side and repeat the process. And then you'll do this on each hand 10 times. Now after that little rehab, I like to focus on my weaknesses. And I've always had a weak handstand on rings, so I've started doing this every single day where I go on the parallettes and I turn them out to a 45 degree angle and I really try getting my elbows to face the wall in front of me. And I'm really pushing my hands to turn and get my pinkies to face that way as well. You'll feel it a lot in your upper shoulders and through your lats as well. It's important to try to push as tall as possible through this position and I'll hold this for one minute every single day. And I've noticed a drastic change in my ring handstand in terms of control when I'm really focusing on the muscles that actually help me turn out the rings or in this position, just turning out on the parallettes. Now we'll switch to my eccentric pull-ups. This is great for shoulder and elbow rehab. I like to do a quick pull up and then a slow three second lower all the way to full extension. I'll start in under grip and then my next set will be an over grip and I'll do this five times on each side. Next we're going to move into my shoulder extension exercise. I'm going to pull my feet through and then I'm going to reach my feet as far out in front as possible. I feel a great stretch in my chest and not to mention the backs of my shoulders. It's great for your high extension swings on P-bars and anything that really works in that realm. And then not to mention, I'm in this compression like I would for a Takamoto just to get that back warmed up as well. And now into the final piece of our daily warm up. This is my tramp warm up. It's a fun way to really just hit those extreme ranges of motion. So I'll start by just bouncing on my back and then opening my shoulders, opening my chest, opening my back. And then I might start doing some hip turns just so I can get into that twisting motion and actually actively using my muscles to get me into those extreme ranges of motion. Then I'll follow that up with some front layouts, back layouts, and trying to keep my head in a neutral position. This is just a fun way to really feel that push through your feet all the way through to every part of your body that goes into a flip. And then I'll finish it off with all my high bar releases done on tramp just for the air awareness and to help translate that over onto the actual event itself. Now this next part isn't actually a daily. I only do this after my ring strength days, which currently are on Tuesdays and Saturdays. But I figured this was good just to put in here right now because I don't want to put it in any other videos in my weekly progressions because this also will never change. But to start, I do 10 T crosses and I hold the last one for 10 seconds. What you should note is that I am constantly reaching my arms behind my body and using the backs of my shoulders because we already overly work the front part of our bodies. So this is a chance to balance it out and focus on the backside. Now with these inverted pushes, what's to note is that this should be coming from your shoulder blades and you want to reach your hands above your head like you're going to land in a handstand when you do a giant on rings. And then you're going to hold for 10 seconds as well. And this is going to be a big push to really just try to get your arms as far back behind you as you can and really squeezing those backs of your shoulders. Next, we'll move into our Maltese reversals. The goal for these are to bring balance to your shoulders and you're really gonna focus on squeezing your post delt and your lats to keep your hands as close to your hips as possible because that's gonna help strengthen yourself for those Maltese's and for those Azarians or Nakayamas as well. And then you'll hold that for 10 seconds 
and then transition to your little bit heavier weights for your dumbbell flies. You're gonna do 20 of these, and by the end of it, you should have some pretty tired backs of your shoulders. But this is gonna be great for preventing surgeries and protecting that labrum. There are way too many guys in this sport that end up having shoulder surgery because their labrum tears. And so if you wanna get better, you wanna stay healthy and always make sure you do your shoulder rehab after your ring strength. Now I know that's a lot of info, but I think it's important that everyone has a warm up that actually warms you up. It's key for staying healthy and being efficient with your time and can be a game changer for optimizing workouts and getting the most out of every minute, especially while we have time restrictions in the gym due to COVID. So I really hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks again for joining and I hope you found this very informative because this is some stuff that I've changed so many times over the years and I think it's finally at its best. So thanks again and I'll catch up with you guys next time.